This is no aviation, sir. Otis, this is counter aviation. This should be an aviation channel, sir. Otis, would you let me define the editorial line of the channel? Thank you very much. We should be speaking of the leaked reduction of F-35 orders by the US military, sir. And we are talking integrated air defenses instead, okay? Since when I came back from China, your attitude toward me has changed. Well, what did you expect? Hmm? The supermarket lady dumped you, did she? Otis! So integrated air defense systems are definitely not a new concept. You can argue that the chain home, the radar chain that during the Battle of Britain was used to locate the German incursions was a very early example of an integrated air defense system. During the Cold War, we also had some examples. The SAGE, North America, and NEDGE in Europe. The US Navy carrier group air defenses are another good example of integrated air defense systems. Also, Russia has really embraced these kind of systems, and for them has always been a way to counterbalance the NATO air superiority with ground-based systems. They are an integral part of their doctrine to operate in absence of air superiority as it is intended in the West. An integrated defense system combines ground and air assets to defend, deny and maintain control over an airspace. The physical components of a system may be ground or air-based sensors, well, usually radars, but obviously also effectors like surface-to-air missiles or anti-air artillery or, at the other end of the spectrum, air combat assets. A system like this also needs to include communications, command centers and all kinds of auxiliaries from power generators to fuel tanks and all the logistics required to sustain the people and keep the assets in good shape. In this video we are not going to discuss the physical compositions or the weapons or the performances of these systems. You can go on Wikipedia and find all of those with plenty of details. In this video we focus on how integrated air defense systems work, that is, we are going to talk about logical components rather than physical components. The first function that is performed by the integrated air defense system is air surveillance. The purpose of air surveillance is to generate the data and the information required for battle management. The raw material for this function are the tracks. I mean the radar tracks. So a track is a piece of information, actually a digital record, containing the data relative to the airborne object. We are talking the altitude, the speed, the direction, but also the classification, the NCTR records, the IFF reply, and so on. Everything starts with detection, which is the stage in which a sensor, and typically a radar, identifies a new target. Actually, this may seem trivial, but it is actually a process where we go from a blip of energy received by the radar antenna to the identification of an actual airborne target. Today, this process is totally automated, but configuring the system to avoid false positives or avoiding too many negatives, that is, missed detections, is not trivial. A relatively famous example refers to the E3 airborne radars. The radar has filters to avoid detecting everything moving too slowly. But since in Germany there is no speed limit, sometimes it happened that the E3 radar 
picked up a car actually speeding on the German motorways because it was act very fast and above the threshold level of the filter. And this generated a classic case of false positive. The initiation process turns the detected target into a track. Again, it may seem simple, but it is actually a quite complicated process. Yes, because from one rather update to the other, recognizing that that detection is actually the same track as before is not trivial. Civilian aircraft have transponders, so everything is simplified, but obviously military aircraft in wartime, they keep it off. So what the system has to do is making an educated guess and estimate the probability that the detection in the second update is the same target that was detected in the first update. As I said, this process is quite convoluted. There is some interesting mathematics involved and there is an old video where we discuss this. I highly encourage you to watch it if you're interested in the details. The identification function finds out what the track actually is. In a sense, it completes the information about the track that the simple radar detection cannot provide. Well, military aircraft use IFF, but this is not a universal solution. Since the IFF emits radiation, sometimes is a function of the radar, sometimes is a separate device, during operation it may be kept off or may be damaged, or it may even be spoofed by the opponent. Another option is non-cooperative target recognition, which is an entire discipline in itself, which it basically works uh, using uh, the subtle clues that you can extract from the radar return. And in general, the IATS uh, use a combination of these techniques. We actually have a video about non-cooperative target recognition, which is a fascinating subject in itself. And again, I highly encourage you to watch it. The final output of the identification phase is a classification of the track, friend, foe, or unknown. What we have described so far happens on a single sensor. All these functions may well be performed by a single radar station. Correlation is the function that puts all these informations together. It is the eye in integrated air defense system. In an IADS, a number of different sensors may generate a track for the same air target. But since radars and sensors in general are not pinpoint accurate and also have different characteristics and features, it is not automatic to be able to say if the tracks generated by these are actually the same target or, for example, just a cluster of nearby targets. This is the same problem that 4++ and 5th generation aircraft have with sensor fusion. If all these tracks were presented on a screen, they will likely form a small blob of targets and it would be difficult even for a human to actually understand if they are one target or many different targets. And if you consider that you can still have false positives, that's even more complicated. In modern systems, the process is entirely digital and it is autonomous, mostly. Sometimes it still requires a man in the loop to actually watch over the computer. The development and the design of these algorithms are the actual added value in the system. Obviously, for this process to take place, all the data relative to all these tracks must be transmitted to somewhere where there is a computer that can do the job. Could be a command center, could be a mobile command center, could be some sort of infrastructure structure. However, the key point is that the communication part of the integrated air defense systems are critical. Without communication, the system ceases to be integrated. For example, during Desert Storm and during the war in the Balkans, the Western Alliance was up against all generation Russian integrated defense systems. For example, if a company command was destroyed or incapacitated in any way, the information would not flow at the upper level. That could be battalion or 
whatever the organization is. This is an important vulnerability because if you break one ring of the chain, you break the entire chain. More modern systems use networks. That is, the information is broadcasted and this creates a common structure that is naturally redundant. So eliminating one element doesn't compromise the integration of all the others. The command of the operation can actually move back and forth between different common centers. So it is worth repeating again, Correlation is the core of the integrated system. It is extremely important even because it influences weapons allocation, as we will see in a minute. And finally, air surveillance includes a maintain function. Uh, this function refers to the capability that these systems have to record all the variations and the changes. This is necessary for the commanders during the operations to take the decisions, but is also important for after action reviews just to learn some lessons. So battle management is the process that receives the tracks on one side and spits out the operating decisions on the other side. During the battle management process, the main decision that is taken is whether to engage or not a target, but it also includes decisions like turning sensors on and off or moving the assets if they can be moved or redeploying the entire system. So the first step is threat evaluation. Yes, because not all the foes are actually threats and so it may not be a priority to engage them. And obviously in this stage also the rules of engagements are extremely important because they will give you criteria to decide if a target is actually a threat or not. Now, if the evaluation is that the track is indeed a threat, then the weapons to engage it need to be allocated. So basically you need to decide what to do against this threat. Again, in modern systems, this process is totally automatic in the sense that the computer will propose to the human operators the best possible solution to engage the threat. Now you can easily understand that if the correlation function was not executed properly, we may allocate, for example, a group of air-to-surface missiles to engage a group of targets, when in reality it is just one aircraft. In the same way, if anything has gone wrong in the previous stages, we may be allocating the wrong weapon to engage a threat with the wrong range, wrong flight characteristics, wrong features, and so on. For example, we may believe that for a specific threat, it's okay to wait for the track to be within range of the short-range systems, while in reality there is the possibility that this track is actually armed with standoff weapons and it can attack the, some components of the systems before being engaged. This is another key process, this is another key function that determines the effectiveness of the system. Weapons performance is obviously important, but if you don't use them at their best, you understand that the consequences are potentially lethal. The final step of battle management is usually referring to an engagement authority. The purpose of the engagement authority is to verify and confirm all the previous steps and authorize the firing. In many situations, is a senior commander. However, in real combat conditions, this authority can be delegated to lower hierarchical levels, or it may even become completely automated. The American carrier group air defenses built around the edge ships can function in fully automatic mode. And sometimes this is necessary, particularly against saturation attacks. So, now that we have decided to engage a threat, we have to do it for real. This process is called weapons control. Well, first, the decision must be relied back to the designated weapon. Again, this process can be completely automatic or could be a actual order, a verbal or written order to some operators. Then the system must provide the weapon with all the information, all the parameters, 
that are required to engage the threat. This function is called pairing. It brings together the threat and the weapons that is going to engage it. After this, the weapon needs to go through a cycle. The first step is to acquire the track. It needs to track the target to be sure that indeed is the right one. Then the weapon need to be launched and it need to be guided toward the target or put in conditions to self-guide. It must explode at the right time and the system must have means to actually assess what happened to understand if the engagement needs to be repeated or what is the best course of action. In all these operations mimic locally in miniature what has happened before at system level. And hopefully, after repeating this cycle one or more times, we are done. So what is the big advantage of integrated air defense systems over just a separate group of systems? Well, with battle management, the system and the people in charge of it act as orchestrators of a large group of assets, of a large group of weapons and sensors. In this way, their operations are actually optimized for the threat. Yes, because isolated systems may either ignore or overkill the threat. An integrated system can compensate the deficiencies of a weapon system with the strengths of another system. It can combine ground system and fighters. Also an integrated system offers a redundancy that is, is not possible to disable the entire complex of the defenses, just destroying one important node or one important command or one important system. This is the reason why they're so common and this is the reason why so much has been invested in those systems in the past. And we are probably going to see many more developments in the future. I hope you actually enjoyed this quick overview of the integrated air defense systems. And if you like these videos, there are several other videos on the channel that you may be interested with, and they're going to appear beside me. In the meanwhile, thank you very, very much for watching. Thank you very much to all those who are supporting the channel with Patreon or as members. And see you there.